You can start off by talking about I love spaghetti and then you're crying about your childhood trauma and your daddy issues at the end of the session. Like, and they, somehow it correlates to you loving spaghetti. I have been in therapy for going on three years now. I've been seeing her every single Friday at the same time for almost three years. Do you know how much of a commitment that is? <laughs> like, you dedicate this time slot to the same person. Like, even when I get a new job, I'm like, no Fridays, guys, no Fridays unless it's after 2 p.m. Committing to therapy has absolutely changed my life in amazing ways, but there are definitely parts of it that I cannot stand at all. Has it actually ruined my life? No, but are there parts of it that annoy me and that aren't so pleasant and that I don't like? Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna get into all of that. So today I'm gonna be talking about my experience with therapy, how I got into it, my journey, and some pros and cons of being somebody that's been committed to it for the past couple years. So if you're somebody that's interested in therapy, this is a really good video for you. This will outline a lot of things that you can expect when you have your first sessions and when you decide to commit to it. Let's talk about my journey with therapy. Okay, so I started therapy and <laughs> take a shot every time I say the word therapy, by the way. I started my treatment, that's another word that my therapist uses, in April 2021. This was right after my breakup. My ex and I broke up and I was enrolled in therapy the following Friday, very shortly after. Basically what had happened was a quick little rundown, not to get too deep into my breakup, but yeah, it was a big reason why I ended up in therapy. So there was like some like blowout fight that happened between my ex and I and a week long period in between the blowout fight and the breakup. So within that week, I had already grieved the loss of this person and I had mentally decided this needs to end. Absolutely knew it. This week was where most of my grieving happened when I was like, yeah, no, this is over. Like I knew, I knew it was over. Mentally, I had broken up with him. And in that week, my mom saw like how low I was. She knew we were gonna break up. And she just kept saying like, you know, like you should revisit therapy. And I was like, I know I should, like I wanted to as well. I felt like I didn't know how to cope with all the emotions that came with this breakup. And I also felt like I did not know myself. I'm not trying to talk down on my ex, but this is the experience that he chose to give me in our relationship. I was dating a narcissist. And if you have experience with that, you know how mind it is you lose yourself because you constantly feel like you are the problem and you're not doing enough and everything you're doing is wrong you're walking on eggshells you're constantly apologizing for things that you should not be apologizing for you become so confused because you can't differentiate reality versus what they're feeding into you and what their delusions are. When you're dealing with somebody who's really good at manipulating, it'll do a number on your mental health and how you view yourself. By the end of that relationship, I can say with confidence, I kind of hated myself because I was basically told that I was not good enough at all times. So yeah, it, it's really shitty to have gone through that. I'm grateful that I did in a weird, weird way. Mind you, it didn't have to be so hard, but it got me in therapy and it was a catalyst for a lot of change in my life, so I'm grateful. So I was lost. I was, I was, I was very lost and I knew I needed something bigger than myself and that happened to be therapy. So I got myself enrolled. And in Canada, through the Ontario Health Insurance Plan, which is basically just free healthcare, it's actually covered and it's free. A lot of people don't know that. If you are from Ontario, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram, Ash Flores TV and ask me for information, I can send it to you. It is free. And a lot of people don't know that. There's a lot of people that have my therapist and pay her like $200 an hour. I pay her $0. The only time I pay is if I miss a session and I don't tell her 24 hours in advance, I pay $60. Never done that. Never paid for a session. So I basically go through a list of doctors that are qualified under OHIP, Ontario Health Insurance Plan, and I send like 70 emails. I get two responses back. One is from some therapist in Toronto saying, hey, sorry, I have no patient spots available. And one is from my current therapist saying, I have one spot available. If you would like to start treatment with me, please let me know within the next two days. If not, I'll have to give your spot to somebody else. So I responded and I saw her the following Friday. So once I get into therapy, it started on the phone because we were still coming out of the pandemic. So I actually did not meet my therapist until maybe October. 
and I started treatment in April, which was interesting. So I had no idea what she looked like. It was all just like over the phone. So every week we'd kind of get into different things. My first therapy session was so wildly uncomfortable for me. And this is not because I have a hard time opening up. This is because psychotherapy is like all about me and my brain. I'm not really getting advice, you know? I'm getting like, let's unpack every layer of your brain. Let's dissect it together. Let me help you do this. Like that. She's like, she guides me, you know what I mean? But she doesn't give too much. She lets me do the work in a weird way. And it helps me so much. So my first therapy session started off with like, so what brought you into treatment? So I told her, you know, I recently like experienced a breakup in the past like week and a half. I told her what I went through, what I experienced, and she validated everything. And in that moment, I didn't realize how much I needed that validation. I was so lost. I had still believed that I had always been the problem. Quick side note, so this is quite embarrassing, but I actually wrote him a letter when we broke up, when I was still in love. Looking back, I don't actually think I was in love. Um, I don't think I was in love because I experienced love after and I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know, but um, I wrote him a letter and it was just basically me like kind of still apologizing for things that I didn't need to apologize for and thanking him for things that I, didn't need to thank him for and expressing my love for this person in ways that I didn't understand yet. And I came across this letter like two days ago, a screenshot of it in my phone. And I was like, oh my God, I was so lost and vulnerable and wounded. It was the day that we exchanged our belongings that I gave it to him. And it reminded me of the energy that I came into therapy with, just like wounded, hurt, sad, not realizing how manipulated I was yet. Like I came into therapy not understanding the manipulation that had occurred. Like, so she helped me unpack all that. And that was heavy. Like my first session looked like me explaining the relationship I was in, but also kind of still defending him. And she would validate me and basically tell me that like, I didn't need to defend him. And it was a mind fuck for me. I was just like, I just didn't understand it. And if you've ever experienced an emotionally abusive or manipulative relationship, you can probably relate when you're just, you just, you can't grasp that because you, I don't know how to, exp I don't know how to explain it. But if you know, you know, and I, I'm sorry if you know, because it's not a fun experience. So it was a lot of me talking. She asked me a couple questions, but it was just me talking. And like, I didn't know what to say. I was like, Okay, this is kind of awkward, like what am I supposed to say? And then the next session was just like, okay, how are you? To this day, every session starts with, hey, how are you? And I was just like, you know, I this and that, and I, I, don't, I don't know what to say sometimes. To this day, I don't know what to say all the time. So the first months of therapy were spent talking about my relationship. She would ask me questions about it, about him, about his upbringing, about my upbringing. A lot of my first two sessions, actually, we did talk about my relationship, but she also asked me a lot of questions about me, what I do for fun, what I don't like, my family, my parents, are they together? What's my cultural background? How old am I? Like all of that, like just a full profile of me. Like, have you had pets? Do you do this? Like, what do you do for work? What do you study in school? And then when we got into my family stuff, then that would unlock deeper layers of family stuff. Like she'd start off with like, you know, what's your favorite childhood memory? And then I'd end up like crying at the end of the session over something like really deep or whatever. So yeah, we just like go on like a trip. That's that's what it is really like with her and with psychotherapy I find. It's a journey. Like you start here and you end up here. Like you just, you go through everything. You can start off by talking about I love spaghetti and then you're crying about your childhood trauma and your daddy issues at the end of the session. Like, and it, somehow it correlates to you loving spaghetti. So anyways, I remember my first few sessions, I felt like therapy wasn't doing that much for me. I felt the validation was helpful and just talking about my problems was helpful, but I felt like I wasn't getting much back. And then one day, maybe like my seventh session, she just like spent the whole session talking and telling me about myself and my delusions and all that. And like. Not in like a rude way. It was just like a, hey, this is the information I've compiled over the past few weeks and this is what my um, analysis is of this. And she just gave me like this whole analysis. And 
it was so interesting. By the end of the session, I was like, whoa you gathered all that wait i told you that huh like it was a trip i was just like when uh, huh because she takes notes i didn't know she was taking notes at the time i mean i probably should have assumed but i didn't know because we we're on the phone right so like i couldn't see but she'd be like yeah it's like when you mentioned that, 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 that. and i'll be like you remember that <laughs> but then i realized she's taking notes so anyways Therapy continued on for months and months, and through these months of therapy, we continued to unpack the relationship. That took months, like, because first, it was talking about, like, myself and how in pain I was and how I ended up in a relationship like that and about him and this and that. And then when she kind of, like, helped me see what I had just gone through, then I got angry. I, <laughs> I was so angry. I have not experienced anger in the way that I did in 2021 in any other part of my life. I was so angry because all my mind could think was, why did you treat me like that? Why did you say this to me? Why did you do that? And suddenly I had all these memories of things that I felt like were normal, but were not normal at all. This was my first relationship. So when you get in a first relationship, you kind of don't know what you're doing. And I was with somebody that was naturally manipulative, but on top of that had been in relationships. So he felt like he had the upper hand. So like he was like kind of teaching me how to be in one. He had even said that before that he was like, he was training me almost. And we like joked about it. Cause I thought that was a normal joke to make. Cause I just didn't, I didn't see it for some reason, you know? So once I saw it, I was pissed. I don't know how long it would have taken me to see it. If I didn't have her, I don't like, so once I started seeing it, it's like the, you know, like the stages of grief, the chart, how the anger phase eventually comes into play. I was pissed. I was just like, yo, like, why did you, why did you treat me like that? I was nothing but good to you. Like, <laughs> I was so nice to you. I was so, so nice to you. And this is how you do me, you know, like, cause all these memories would come rushing back, like small things, not small things, like just moments that we had that I felt like were normal ups and downs of a relationship but when i started to talk about it in therapy she was like that's not normal no they shouldn't have said this they shouldn't have done this they did all of these things were brought to my awareness and then i started talking about it with my friends because i thought it was normal in the relationship i never talked about it with my friends it was just a part of a relationship but when i started telling my friends like yeah like i remember this one time he did this and this happened and he said this and they'd be like actually why did you never tell me this and i'm like oh I, I don't know man i don't know so the anger came in. I wanted to fight someone. I wanted to go to a rage room. And then once the anger went away and I processed that and I was no longer angry and I could just move on, that's when therapy really began for me. Because now my sessions became less about my relationship and my ex and me being sad and me being angry and me being this and memories and this and that. And now it became about my everyday life my friends, my job, my my desire to go to school, my history with my family, my upbringing, like it became about so many other things. And I feel like that's when therapy really, really started to make an impact in my life. And this was around maybe like August or so. And then I met my therapist in September, October. And that was so interesting. Like I remember going to her clinic and I was like, oh, she's, she's so short. Oh, she's, she's this, she's that. Oh my God, this, I pictured her with long hair, you know, like all these little things. I'm like, whoa, like she's so cute. And she has, my therapist has such good style. I've never actually told her that, but she has such good style. So then I got really deep into therapy and that's when it just became about life. And like, don't get me wrong, like every now and then, like my relationship at that time might still be referenced to certain things. Like, for example, the person that I recently was spending the most of my time with that I had um, developed feelings for, like, there were some repeated patterns that I had been drawn to in this person that um, had attracted me to my ex in the early days, you know what I mean? And that kind of came back up during this period and this relationship with this person and little moments, it might still be brought up, but for the most part, like we don't talk about that anymore. Uh, we talk about my life and a lot of it comes back to my family and my upbringing. It's really interesting to hear somebody else's perspective. like. Sometimes I'll come in with one belief and I'll leave the session with a whole other belief. And yeah, she's somebody that does not feed my delusions or my fantasies, as she says. She's somebody that gives me a reality check at all times. And it's something I never knew I needed until 
I was receiving treatment. I would say to feel the effects of therapy, it took like three months to be like, oh, like this is working. But to really feel it and to be like, okay, this has changed my life, I would say like nine months. And I do feel like there's a difference in phone sessions versus in-person sessions. My phone sessions, I was at home, I'd be multitasking, I'd be cooking, I'd be doing things, you know? Um, I tried to dedicate time and just lie down and take the call, but sometimes like, because I'm home, I'm doing things, right? Like I'd be driving. But when you're in person, you're dedicating this hour of your time to yourself and being in therapy. I lie on a couch and I face a wall, like, sorry, a window, and she's behind me, so I don't see her, which I love. Our first session, we made out of contact. I, I hated that. I was like, I can't do this. I cannot do this. Next sessions, and when we switched offices, because she did move offices, then the chair set up with the lounge thing and her behind me is what works perfectly for me. Okay, so now you know a little bit about my story and my journey with therapy and now I can talk about the pros and cons of therapy and why I really hate it sometimes. <laughs> like I can't stand it sometimes. So if you are curious to hear what I love and hate about therapy, all the pros and cons, then go check out this video. It's already up on my channel. All right guys, that wraps up the video. That's how I feel about therapy, my journey. I highly recommend being in therapy. I really do. I think you should try it out. Give it at least like three months. Don't give up. Don't give up. And keep it consistent. Commit to it. If you're not ready to commit, give it some time until you feel like you're ready for the commitment. But just know that when you do choose to commit, it is life changing and it is a beautiful experience. I'm very lucky that the therapist that I ended up with, I actually really like and I'm very compatible with. It wasn't the case. I would have found a different therapist by now, but I was very blessed. I, it, it was exactly what I need at the time and what I need now. So. Do your research, find somebody that makes sense to you. And if you're from Ontario and you wanna know how to get free therapy, send me a DM. And if I don't answer, send me another one. But I will respond as soon as I see it. I will see you guys in the next video.